Today it's BRS TV Rave right Back Wednesday, and today we answer, is this reactor worth all the cash I'm putting into it? Hey, I'm Ryan with Beers TV Refactor. Every week we do our best to help you guys enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby with quick, straight to the point answers to your questions. Almost every reefer I know has contemplated a calcium reactor at one point, and there always seems to be the same three questions. Is it hard, which we answered in last week's video, and then is it expensive, and is it worth it? Today we answer those last two with cost, as well as end the internal debate of is a calcium reactor worth it, with some pretty direct answers. Some people might not like the answer we developed, but at the end of this video, I'm certain you'll have what you need to know to make your own decision. We can add up the cost pretty easy and something that we will do in just a moment, but worth it is something else entirely, because different reefers value different things. Most of the advice we all get as hobbyists is inherently biased to someone else's desires. The answer is not found in a right or wrong approach, but one tailored to your specific needs and desires. Directly put, what's right or wrong for you? Everyone has a different demand tank, budget, knowledge set, available space, an idea of what makes this a hobby. So I'm just gonna list out some of those advantages so you can make your own value determinations based on your own personal desires. First advantage is calcium reactors can be cheaper than common retail two parts on fairly large or super high demand tanks. That said, they'll probably not be cheaper on 90% of the tanks out there. If cheaper is the only goal and you don't have a rather large tank in the hundreds of gallons or really high demand, I think I'd just stop here and move on because it will not be cheaper for most reefers. Next advantage is calcium reactors don't have the issue of contributing to elevated salinity like salt-based two parts do. On super high demand tanks or tanks with minimal water changes, salinity from two parts can be an issue and calcium reactors are often one of the best solutions. Calcium reactors also do add some other desirable elements than just calcium and alkalinity, most notably strontium, something that we've seen in the ICP testing that we've done on the influent. The reactor also likely adds some of these elements at close to the ratio that the coral uptakes it because the media is often just old coral skeleton. Related to that, there's a cool factor and reciprocal green element to the fact that you're melting old dead coral skeleton to provide the required nutrient of elements to the new corals. A jug of calcium chloride and soda ash essentially achieves a similar result, but just isn't as cool as using old coral to regenerate new coral. And lastly, this is a hobby and part of a lot of hobbies is the gear junkie component Part of tricking out a car, woodworking, or home brewing isn't just the act of a faster car, building the perfect bench, or perfecting your favorite beer, but the process of learning about, acquiring, and applying technology to achieve different types of results. Those last two things of cool factor and making a hobby fun are obviously the most hotly debated elements of this discussion. That's because those two things are either of zero value to you, or they make up what a hobby is for people, and there's no wrong answer to that. There might be some other personal reasons that you value or devalue a calcium reactor, so add those into the equation. But in any case, you might already have what you need to know to make a decision. Economics might not be the sole primary driver. That said, economics are always at least part of the equation, so what does it cost? Let's look at one of the cheaper approaches. You're probably looking at at least 300 to 350 for a small reactor, 60 to 90 for a CO2 regulator, 50 for a feed pump, 35 in media, 50 for a CO2 canister rental and gas. So you're gonna be into this for at least 500 bucks and a lower cost gear approach assumes that you're willing to do some manual adjusting of bubble and flow rates and deal with the related learning curve. This is that point where the general long-term cost of two-part dosing versus calcium reactor debate begins, meaning what does the long-term cost of CO2 and calcium reactor media cost versus two-part additives? It really depends on the two-part that you're using. Recently, Randy did a video which calculates the cost of two-part on a 100-gallon tank and a fairly high 1DKH alkalinity consumption, which ranged from about 30 bucks a month to just $3.65 with the BRS two-part pharma. I'll just say it, if savings is a priority here, I just assume that you're gonna be using the BRS Pharma. On a tank like this, just matching the original $500 calcium reactor setup versus a two-part Pharma setup at $3.65 a month and a pair of $80 dosers, it's gonna take around eight years and not a realistic return. Even at double the tank size and double the consumption, the payoff is probably three plus years out once you factor in the consumables of CO2 refills, calcium reactor media, replacing pumps and components of either automated two-part or the reactor. Now that math is obviously very different if you're using a $30 a month two-part. In that case, the return could be as little as 18 months on that 100 gallon, one DKH a day tank. If it was twice as big and double the consumption, it could be as little as six months. 
A return on investment is six to 18 months sounds solid, but in reality, I don't think anyone looking for the cheapest solution was using 60 to $120 a month in high-end two-part additives. So that's more when you're in the hunt for what you believe to be the absolute best available option. So in that spirit, I think we also need to look at this not just from a budget calcium reactor angle, but actually from one of the best or easiest to run solutions, meaning a solution which automates your reactor setup and tuning make it easy enough that anyone can do it and has almost no meaningful learning curve. In that case, the reactor is probably a bit larger, advanced with higher grade pumps in around 500 bucks. Rather than counting CO2 bubbles, you're probably using a $350 carbon doser and it has a super easy dial to get the bubble rate right. Most will also use a pH controller like the Milwaukee or Apex to control the pH of the reactor because that makes controlling the concentration of the solution inside the reactor near brainless. A standalone controller is about 103 bucks or 500 for something like the Neptune Apex. Then lastly, the $300 FX STP continuous duty dosing pump from Camor is probably the most groundbreaking change for calcium reactor in recent years because it's rated for 24 seven use, which currently no other aquarium dosing pump is. Combined with the benefits of a pH controller and stable concentration, a continuous duty dosing pump makes a calcium reactor about as easy as dosing two part. Are your calcium and alkalinity levels dropping? Turn the knob and dose a bit faster from the reactor. Levels rising, turn the knob down. A calcium reactor is literally that easy. That's why I say there's near zero learning curve to this combination. So that price of that combination can be in excess of 1400 bucks, but you can see why all the design tweaks and additions are so valuable and why many calcium reactor owners are now running them this way. So in the spirit of cost savings, if you're willing to make that kind of investment, there's a good chance that you're using one of the more expensive two parts out there as well. If that's the case, most reefers with that one DKH consumption 100 gallon tank are probably looking at a return on investment of around four to five years based on initial costs, but probably closer to six years when gear replacement is factor in. If you have or will have a higher consumption tank or something significantly larger than 100 gallons, you might see that payoff drop to two to three years, there are obviously a lot of moving pieces, including the type of two part that you're using. So in the spirit of that super direct answer, today's question, is the reactor worth all the cash that I'm gonna put into it? For the average reefer with a normal size tank and affordable two parts like BRS Pharma, I just don't think there's a meaningful financial return on investment. So based on that criteria alone, I would just skip it. However, it can absolutely be a solid financial investment if you're in one of three common situations. You have a very large or high consumption tank, you're using high-end expensive retail two parts, or okay with fairly long return horizons. In each of those cases, there is a legit payoff. However, if you're a gear junkie and this kind of thing makes the hobby for you and you have the budget to support that, then the answer is an obvious yes, it's worth it. We all work hard so we have a few bucks to spend on the things that we enjoy. So that spirit, the part of enjoying it means actual success. And we just released a video called Calcium Reactor Setup the Easy Way. I actually put together a cool playlist of all the best setup and tuning videos. If you're ready for that leap, this is probably the best place to start. Randy and I also have some cool reactor video ideas planned. So subscribe and hit that bell to be notified. See you next Wednesday with the next batch of BRS TV Refacts.